हेलो 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 फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक अगेन एंड दिस इज द कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ माय प्रीवियस वीडियो ट्यूटोरियल दे आर वी हैड स्टार्टेड डिस्कशन अबाउट द इंबेडेड डेटाबेस व्हिच कम्स विद द स्प्रिंग बूट सो दीज आर द थ्री डेटाबेस लाइक एस2 एचएसक्यूएल डीबी एंड अपाचे टर्वी दैट इज द इनबिल्ट डेटाबेस इनसाइड द स्प्रिंग बूट एंड इन प्रीवियस एज वी वर टॉकिंग इन प्रीवियस वीडियो uh we have added this all dependency in our class path and at, at a time i have on uh, rest of the two dependency i have commented and uh, uh, currently just i have uncommented the dervish derby dependency so that's the reason so spring boot takes this dependency uh, looks into this dependency and this dependency uh, we have added in the form and because of that uh, dervi jars is Uh, getting added in the maven dependency right so here if we search for the uh, derby then derby jars is available here and once uh, if a spring boot uh, finds derby dependencies in the uh, available in the class path then that creates all required uh, i mean resources which is which is which is, uh, which, is uh, which is mandated to interact with the database so that's get created and that's that's how this Uh, data source is getting created if i run this project then you can see on the console this data source i'm printing on the console and uh, one of the ticket just we are inserting the database and uh, we are trying to print this data source right and basically this data source just i have auto wired so that uh, spring suppose uh, spring would have created this data source and that if that is present in the uh, spring container then this will Uh, print over here in the console right that we are trying to print and here you can see so one insert insert a statement has been fired because one of the ticket we are inserting into the ticket information we are into insert into the uh, derby database and here you can see data source double colon colon this we are printing and uh, this is the data source name one of the implementation of data source this class belongs to this package and data source information you can see lot of attributes source data and one of the main attribute is driver class name and here you can see the embedded driver class right and and package name you can see derby so derby is basically uh, in memory database which is developed by the apache software foundation and uh, this data source contains max active me, uh, max active max idle lot of attributes which is contained by the this data source and uh, only Uh, matter of adding a few lines in your pom dot xml basically and you get the data source immediately right so only you add the dependency and you got the data source in your application so it's really cool now next thing uh, next database dependency we have a uh, something is called s2 database so this part i'm going to going to uncomment and let's see and nothing will have to do now will data source will be created by using s2 database and that's it and even thing there is no code change as such so my machine is little slow now if you look into the pom.xml now we are using the s2 database now if you go to the maven dependency that will be updated for the s2 instead of derby derby we have commented out right so here now dependency for s2 is added right s2 dot jar now if i run this main application and check it out the data source what is what are the information is hold by the data source object now you you can check the driver class name basically database driver class name and uh, here application has started now one of the you can see one of the ddl first of all database usually do the clean up operations right so hbm2 ddl some tool is there that tool we can set in the application dot properties so those things we'll see later point of time now uh, by default value of hbm to ddl is create drop so basically uh, hyper uh, jpa basically drops this table first of all if that exists and creates that table from this beginning and that inserts a insert query because one of the ticket we are inserting into the main application right and now you can see the data source now now package name is different now you can see now you look into the driver class name so uh, driver class name is r.s2.driver now 
S2 database is uh, going to use by our data source, right? So that's the beauty of the Spring Boot. Now, if you add S2 database in your class path, then that will immediately pick the uh, S2 jar to create a data source. Now I'm going to comment it out and I'll use uh, HSQL database. So this part I'm going to comment. And once you save, then see this uh, project is getting updated. And if here you can see uh, HSQL DB jar is added immediately. And again, if I run this application, then now data source uh, will be created uh, by using uh, SSQL database. Now you can check it out the data source. Now uh, saying that uh, this address is already in use. That means our our application was up and running again. We have we are trying to run on the same port. That's the issue. So let's run it again. I have killed the server and running again. Now, if you look into the console, then you can see a lot of things happening on the console. And some of the things like uh, database is created, database table is created first, that is dropped and again created. And even insert query has been fired. Now you can see the uh, data source no name. And uh, if you look into the driver class name, look at here. That is driver class name is arc. Uh, HSQL DB dot driver class. So now HSQL database uh, DB is going to use uh, by our data source. That's the beauty, right? So guys, uh, so that's all. Uh, we have a lot of discussion about the uh, embedded database which comes with the Spring Boot. Right? So basically, this database is basically this embedded database is basically recommended uh, for the testing purpose only, right? You cannot use this kind of database for the broad environment because in broad environment uh, whatever uh, uh, whatever action you take right those things you, you should you would want to save somewhere in the external system right so a spring boot uh, embedded database basically the embedded database concept is very helpful during the development phase because they are lightweight fast quick start uh, quick start time uh, improve the stability of uh, of the configuration it lets developer focus more on the de development instead of how to configure a data source to the uh, database so that's the advantage of embedded database which comes with the spring port right so that's all i wanted to discuss in this video tutorial uh, i haven't discussed about the rest of the files but uh, but uh, because i'm assuming uh, uh, you have watched you would have watched my uh, previous video so let me discuss about the rest of the class in uh, a little faster manner so here this is the bootstrap class basically when you uh, uh, create a spring boot application then one of the classes is considered as a bootstrap class from where your application uh, basically starts right so here basically application dot right so this this is your boot, bootstrap class because this class is annotated as at the rate a uh, spring boot application and this annotation basically holds a lot of annotation inside like a spring boot configuration enable auto configuration a component scan etc right uh, and here we have just auto wire these two references and uh, this is our main method because bootstrap class always holds the main method and here uh, we have overridden this method this method is coming from this interface and this method will be called by the spring boot automatically right so once you run this method and one of the ticket this is ticket is nothing but this entity class which i have created mm -hmm. right so if you are aware about the hibernate or any of the orm tool then you must know about the entity class so this class is on the entity this represents there is a separate table in the database right and table name would be ticket if you do not specify table name then uh, class name would be considered as a, the table name and uh, before the every property i have specified the corresponding column name if you do not specify column name then uh, i mean jpa or hibernate will consider uh, property name as a table name right and uh, this property is just i have made auto incremented i don't want to send value for this while saving into the database and this is a prime ticket that's why i want to add the rate id and uh, some of the constraints you can apply over here i have made null equal to false means this would be not null 
right and rest of things is pretty straightforward we have declared the properties private property corresponding public sector return method now while application is start up just we are calling this one of the service method is called create ticket and we are passing the ticket and this makes call to the doll layer and doll layer basically here we are using the uh, a spring uh, data jpa right so basically we create an interface and uh, that extends by the current repository and in current repository you will see the some of the basic methods are already available like save save uh, find one find all so count delete these are the methods are already available delete all so these are the basic operation still we can add some uh, uh, more so if you want the some custom methods to be added here that we can do as well so those things we'll see in the uh, uh, future video there will explore a spring data in more depth right and uh, basically uh, here basically this project I had created for the current operation for uh, basically RESTful web services so that's why we have a controller right this controller we have written and this controller so method contains the uh, CRUD related methods right so we have a post method which is basically responsible to create a resource on the server uh, right so and we have annotated this method argument as the request body so that when we send the json that will convert into the java and when uh, this will convert into the java automatically and we are calling the uh, service method to create a uh, ticket into the database so that's all about this now second method we have a we are reading the ticket information based on the id and we are passing the ticket ID as a path parameter right and third we want to retrieve the all book ticket so that's what we have at this method this looks up into the database uh, from service to DAO and this will return the all tick book ticket information third and um, next method we have a to delete the ticket information from the database based on the ticket ID so that's what that and delete mapping get mapping delete mapping is basically deleting a uh, resource on the server and finally put mapping so basically if you want to update some resource on the server that's what we have this one so here you can see we have used some uh, regular expression why if you do not use this ex regular expression then if you pass a uh, email id then suppose your email id is kk at the rate yahoo.com then dot com will be truncated right so that shouldn't happen that's why i have used this regular expression if you use this regular expression then actual email address will really drive over here and same we are passing here so just we are trying to update uh, uh, a passenger email address based on the uh, ticket id so that's all about this method right and these methods uh, i have tested through the uh, postman right postman on all the chrome uh, plugin and through which you can test this restful web services so that already i have seen I have shown you in previous video tutorial so just I have explained you about the rest of the files and uh, when we talk about the spring bit then uh, this is the one of the most important file there we are going to declare a lot of properties so right now we have we are working with the embedded database so that's why a lot of properties is having the default value only but if you work with the actual database like MySQL Oracle DB2 etc then you need to specify everything like data user name uh, database url username password explicitly you will have to specify over here as you would not be able to create the data source so these things will have to keep in mind so that's all there are so much discussion on the in, uh, embedded database in a spring boot so now in next video series will come up i'll come up with the some new topic in a spring boot so till that uh, Thank you so much and this code I am going to uh, put on the github and github location you will get in the video description. So easily you can download and you can run in your local machine. So thanks for watching this video and see you next video tutorial.